All right, good morning. Happy Saturday, Balance Nation. It's time for another coronavirus slash COVID-19 update. Um, so today's going to be a big one. Got lots to cover. And so the thing about it is, is uh, we have to realize that uh, the, the data just keeps coming in. The posts keep coming in and people are, you know, I think starting to feel a little bit better about things. So I'm going to be doing my part. Today I'm going to be talking about why context is absolutely vital. Okay. And the thing is, is that, you know, per balance protocol tenants 101, we talk about context cubes. So context, context, context. So here's the thing. We're going to bump into that. We're going to get into some new terms that people have been hearing about lately that you didn't even never heard before two weeks ago, like social distancing and cytokine storm. And then I'm going to profile a few of the, of the supplement pills, potions, and powder peddlers and uh, give you guys a breakdown of what the science says about that nonsense and empower you with even more comfort amongst this corona craze. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's time for another exciting episode of uh, Straight Talk with Dr. Anthony G. Beck. No, nah, that's not the name of my show. All right, guys, here's the thing. Um, we're going to break into it today, some big ones. Since we're all stuck at home, not me, because I get out and about, and you should too. Um, but you know I got to come on here and give love to Balance Nation. If you are not in Balance Nation, but you're watching this over on YouTube or other places, um, make sure you head over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Balance Nation and get in the know. All right. So again, for those of you who are watching this in Balance Nation and you want to be able to share it, seeing as how we are a closed group over there so we can talk more candid and freely, doesn't mean we don't get censorship by Big Brother vis-a-vis uh, -vis Facebook. Um, you can head over to youtube.com forward slash balance protocol and you can watch uh, this there. You can actually uh, comment, like, and subscribe, hit the notification bell and share this with those that you love so they can keep a sober understanding of all this nonsense. Okay, so let's get into it. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the tally. You know, we're just weighing in on that kind of fun stuff. We'll get you, we'll just go to the tail of the tape. Okay, and so as of today, um, in the United States, a total confirmed of 19,931 cases. Now, again, remember, I use air quotes on confirmed. That confirmation is not done uh, by a very reliable matrice, a matrix, okay? It's using a uh, tremendously flawed and featured uh, in other video test uh, PCR uh, nasal swab looking for an RNA particle that is not specific only to coronavirus or uh, SARS-CoV-2, okay? So, eh, but 19,000. All right, let's go with that. 275 deaths, okay? Now, here's the thing. As I always say, because I'm going to say it every time, because lo and behold, somebody who's never been here before will go and try to crucify me for downplaying the death of 275 people. Well, guess what? People die every day, guys. Lots of them. Lots and lots. And you know how many of them uh, die from other viral infections uh, in our country and around the world? A lot. Okay. I was just outside, so I'm still, I wouldn't got my, my pollen. I wish we'd get a little rain here in Florida, man, because I tell you one thing, everything is yellow. You got all that pollen. Maybe that's beating up the virus particles. So staying hydrated, of course. This is my high quality H2O. Okay, this is my reverse osmosis remineralized and structured water. Oh, it's pretty awesome sauce. Okay, one of the best tips, okay, for fighting viral stuff, except for stupidity that goes viral out there. All right, so where do we jump into? Now, one of the things I wanted to do real quick and um, is I wanted to make sure that um, I cover a couple of things. Now, one of the... the Upshots is, as you guys know, that Dr. AGB is a couple of things, right? Well, I've told you I'm the big three C's before, right? A Christian, capitalist, and constitutionalist. Well, that's one. I got two more to add to the list, okay? Another C. I'm a contrarian. I'm a contrarian. And not just as a, you know, as a, 
uh, pertains to the stock market. Um, but I don't go where the norm goes. I always think outside of the box. So I'm in the realms of other uh, free thinkers and people that have challenged authority in the past. Uh, I just tend to do it with a smile and uh, not a lot of bitterness, right? But a uh, little, little, little dose of sarcasm goes a long way, okay? Because I think for myself and I want you to think for yourself. So on that note, what I want you to do is always remember what my edict is and that is don't believe me. Check my math, check my literature, check my arithmetic, Okay, go and look it up. Use the Dewey Decimal System. Get into some libraries when they open those back up. Jesus, all right? Um, just Googling stuff or tapping on the keyboard is not always effective. You got to get to um, a place where you used to remember the card catalog. I think it's all digital now, but anyways, for those of us who used to do the little Dewey Decimal crawl through those big, remember those big old long drawers and we grab that little cat key and stuff? Pretty fun. Anyways, uh, books, read some books outside of the, uh, the, the, the noise and confusion on the info space, okay? So one of the things I'm gonna talk about is a term that I, I would I'm, raise your hand virtually. If you ever even heard of the term social distancing just two weeks ago, no. A month ago, no. Some of you have, maybe, right? But here's the thing. So I get that construct, but do I recommend or do I um, uh, think that we should be doing social distancing? No. Okay, is that contrary to what the, and I'm gonna call them the powers that be, are recommending for everybody? Well, of course it is. And that's my constitutional right to do that. This is my pure opinion, okay? This is not medical advice, okay? So here's the thing though with that. Here's the context cubed of me saying that, okay? What that actually means is, is it has different definitions, okay? So people talk about social distancing and they think that's sequestration. That means getting in your house and staying in your house and getting away from everybody. That's absurd. It's totally absurd. Um, all under the auspices of social distancing, they're wanting to close beaches and stuff like that. That's one of the best damn places you can go right now is sunshine, you know, your ass in the sand and the toes in the water, right? drinking some nice water with a little squeeze of something, something in there, right? And having fun with your your, your friends and your family. Now, does that mean I, I support all these um, spring breakers packing in there, smoking a bunch of stuff, doing a bunch of drugs, fooling around with a whole bunch of people and packing in and loud music and all that stress and partying? Hell no, okay? They shouldn't be doing that anyways. They just wreck the beaches anyways. Don't even start on that. So no, I don't support that but that doesn't mean the other. You see what I mean by that? So we always have to define what we're arguing about whenever we say a term, okay? Like me using the term hoax in so many other videos, I've used that term as pertains to this coronavirus hoax. So as Ron Paul, okay? So get, ask me about the definition before you go and attack me. And on that note, one of the things I posted here just recently was a litmus test. Okay, it's kind of like King Solomon. Remember back in, you know, go a little biblical on you guys. For you atheists, that's okay and all that kind of fun stuff, but it's good. Okay, let's look at that fairy tale book called the Bible. Oh my God. Now the Christian's like, did you just blaspheme? I can't, listen guys, I can't keep everybody happy and I never, I don't really care to. All right, so those who understand me, get it. But there's a good old story of King Solomon and there was these two ladies and they were both trying to claim this baby. Okay, and they're like, oh no, that's my baby. They're like, no, that's my baby. And the king goes, hmm, okay, tell you what, we're just gonna cut the baby in half and give you both half, so that way you both get an equal part. You know, kind of like judges do these days, just to get people the hell out of the courtroom. Not that that's happened to me. But one woman uh, steps up and, and, and says, uh, well, the, one, the first lady goes, yep, all right, let's do that, exactly. And then the other person, the mom, you know, the other lady goes, supposedly the mom says, no, 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 she can have the baby. Don't split the baby. Okay, go with and whatever. I don't know if that's a real true story, but the moral of the story is King Solomon knew that the mom who didn't want to chop the baby in half was the true mother. Okay, so here's the thing. Just like you guys, I spend a little time uh, flipping through Instagram and stuff like that, and you come across things, and I follow some of my colleagues out there and all their stupid stuff that they're doing uh, and recommendations um, where it... Uh, um, uh, re requires praise, I shall give it. Where it needs refutation, I shall provide it, okay? But people don't like to be corrected in their own form of craziness. I do. Feel free to disagree with me. Let's debate. Let's have open dialectic, respectful stuff, no ad hominem attacks. Let's keep it to the matter at hand. But if you draw first blood on me, I'm going to burn you down. That's what's going to happen. I don't play like that, okay? I'm from the dirty south. 
Okay. I'm the youngest of four brothers and two sisters. Okay. No, I'm a lover, man. The thing is, is this, but I will burn you down if you, if you don't come correct. That's the way that works. Okay. But we'll be friends after the, after the fight. Okay. So here's the deal. There's people that whenever they see that I disagree with someone, they seek to suppress. They clamor and they go, oh, let's everybody report him for spreading misinformation. You know, it's, it, it's a, that's a liberal progressive technique, right? They, they say, you know, what assault is. Or if I, if I type up something and it's a bad graphic, oh, you just raped me. Oh my gosh. So don't get it twisted. So you can always tell the person who's in the wrong if they seek to, when you give your opinion, to shut you down to recruit others into the bullying attempt. That's what happens, okay? So if you got people out there, guys, that you don't like what they're saying, don't just go and tell them that misinformation. Tell them why they have misinformation and, they, and encourage them to go and research and possibly you know, take a different way of looking at things. That's what I would love to do, right? I don't know everything, right? But I am right 98% of the time. Why am I right 98% of the time? Because I do my due diligence and research before I formulate an opinion. If ever I give my opinion, you can sure heck believe, okay, that I have done my research, okay, and not by Googling, all right? So you guys with me on that? So the social distancing thing is crazy. Where was social distancing for the last 100 years, the last 10 pandemics, and just the last flu season when 60,000 people died and we had 61 million cases? What in the hell? I have to give a shout out and props to my protege and student, uh, Dr. Eric Schlobum for, and I just shared a post of that in Balance Nation about that. Yeah, sorry about all you guys who got duped before. <clears throat> now we're learning about how to wash our hands. Didn't any of you guys watch Mr. Rogers growing up? You know, get a little Sesame Street in your life. You know, hell, even you know the the purple dinosaur. You know, Barney probably taught people how to you know do their. <laughs> So here's the thing. So on the good side, people are being more vigilant of all that kind of fun stuff. But guess what? Now, welcome to the Petri dish of the world. And it's, it's called being everywhere. What about all the other thousands of little protein RNAs that are out there and bacteria and fun guy? Come on. All right. So that's why I don't buy into the social distancing as per my definition, as I presented to you. Okay. No, I don't think people should be, you know, I'm okay with the bars being reduced and concerts and gyms and that kind of crap. Okay. But this is why the grocery stores are still open. The gas station's still open. I went to go drop off a package at UPS yesterday. And as soon as I walked in, this isn't racist. I'm actually representing the, you know, the situation as much as, as it was accurate. Excuse me, sir. You have to leave. Go back outside of the door. We have a six foot rule. I mean, as soon as I came in, he told me, blam. He didn't say, uh, pardon me, sir. We have a six foot rule and raise his voice a little bit. It was very, ah, right. There was two other people in the lobby, this little old UPS store. And I said, well, I'm just dropping off anyways, because I'm smart enough to always just you know, print my own labels and not stay on that stupid line anyways. So anyways, I dropped it off and I was out. But my heavens, the hysteria, right? Now, did I confront him about it or anything like that? No, because it doesn't matter. In other words, I dropped my package and I'm out. So it's crazy out there, right? So that's the context of all that kind of stuff. Um, as far as the elderly, listen, we have a poppy. He's over across town. And we go over and we check on him and we make sure he gets outside and things like that. And I got two princesses. You know what I mean? That's code for Petri dishes with gowns. <laughs> Little kids <laughs> and everything, right? So <clears throat> I'm not staying away from them. You know, we're giving them love because, you know, when they sit at home and they're stuck in there and they're just watching all this nonsense play out on TV and they're freaking all out. And where's my, you know, where's my grandkids and my kids and man, am I going to do this? Oh, God, the sky's falling. Nope. Go play. Go have a good time, okay? Just limit the people that are there, right? So pick one or two people in the family that can take care of your elderly and go laugh and have fun. It's just like when you go out and you party in the Petri dishes known as bars and the club, right? You pick a designated driver. These are simple things, okay? But don't think this means sequestration in your house and staying here and just start, you know, doing all the other kind of fun stuff, okay? So don't stick your elders in a spot, Okay, get them outside, roll them around, get that walker warmed up. Okay, put a little hurry in that hurricane. Okay, all right, so here's the thing you guys all know that I always close my videos by saying live life in balance. You know, what that means is 
is a lot of stuff. It It's prevention, okay? And if you want to know more about Balance Protocol, go to programs.balanceprotocol.com and enroll for free. You ain't got nothing else to do. You're sitting around the house, okay? And uh, do the BP Prime program. And that you, you understand where I'm coming from. A lot of context cubed in there. And you even learn about context cubed in there. Okay. But my point is, is this, if you are balancing out the four factors in your life of, of uh, environment, lifestyle, mindset, and nutrition, okay, and you are correcting uh, your environment through your air, water, light, sound, EMF, and food, then you move on to your GI tract, and then you get your mindset and cognition right, and then you get over and you, you, you balance out your immune system and inflammatory pathways, and you just work through the 2358 protocol, which you can learn at programs.balanceprotocol.com, BP Prime, it's all free. You'll live life in balance. And these things will just bounce off of you, just like all the other kind of things that happen out there. From time to time, um, you might uh, you know, have picked your nose or done something on a subway or the, the tram going out of town you know, at uh, uh, MCO Airport or hanging out at Disney. And you might pick up a little bit of protein particulate that causes your immune system to go into upheaval. And that's okay. You're not going to die from it if your constitution is strong you got all this stuff but you'll pass through it. Which brings me to another term that so many people are bringing up nowadays and cycling out there because they're trying to be all cool and reveling, a cytokine storm, cytokine storm. So what? since I had some behind the scenes questions to cover that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into a couple of things here and give you an understanding real briefly, okay, of what that is, okay? So, there are um, a difference in stuff, all right? So if we go ahead and we take a look, you can go do some, some research here in the um, um, PubMed, okay, in, in NIH, right? And you can look up and see what are Th1 and Th2 responses. What are they, okay? You have these specialized cells, right? CD4 and CD8s, T lymphocytes expressing different ways. They, they, they can differentiate into different types. They have different functions. This is one part of your immune system, okay? So when people talk about immune boosting stuff, they're talking out of their A double Zs, their Azs, okay? Because your skin is the immune system. So, you know, if you take all those little supplements and those memes that, you know, uh, Jockers and Hyman and, and Cresser and all the, you know, and O'Brien and all the other people and stuff like that, they're all out there selling supplements, tell you to. So that's magically gonna help support your immune system that's on your skin? No. What about in your bowels? No. What about in your liver? No. Kidneys? No. Lymphatic system? No. Lungs? No. You want to see what I'm saying? Okay. You got to understand what the heck you're talking about. That's like saying, hey, take these tires for motor vehicles, for automobiles. Okay. And somebody gives you this big old truck tire and you try to put it on your Vespa. Doesn't work like that. Okay. So that's that. So. Here's what we also have, another cute little study here, right? We're talking about immunological decision-making. How does the immune system decide to mount a helper T cell response, okay? There's a lot of cool stuff in there. So not only do we have, you know, T1 and T2, we got two, T17 balance, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of context to this. These are some of the factors that you see things like, um, these drug commercials on TV seeking to suppress. It's all about immune system suppression. Okay, as opposed to balance, right? So there's a lot about all this. So here's the concept. Cytokine storm is basically a construct, okay, that is, is something along the lines of you know, your body has uh, some type of elicited response from some type of exterior energetic or pathogen or stressor um, in, um, um, in your body, okay? And so then now the body mounts a response. Are we talking about your acquired immune response? Are we talking about an innate immune response? So there's more to that. In other words, lots of context. This is not a master class on what all those are. I'm just trying to get you to understand here what all this stuff means, okay? To as, as best as I can. The upshot is, okay, is that your body is um, a very complex set of interwoven systems, okay? So basically the term cytokine storm basically um, is just to understand that when your immune system start of, of this particular uh, Th1, 2, and 17 system, particularly, goes awry and you get this inflammatory response that's flaring out of control. 
But that's the thing though. Just because it flares up doesn't mean it's a storm, doesn't mean it's out of control. We cannot presuppose that it's a bad thing when your divinely created body's intelligence is responding to something that is not self. You see what I'm see what I'm saying? This is what like these food allergy tests out there, like the IgG test and the Cyrex labs and that kind of crap that these functional medicine people are pumping out there. You see, and they go, oh, you had an immunoglobulin G response. Well, that doesn't mean it was a harmful response by default. It was a response. There's a big difference. Sometimes your body responds with the immunoglobulin G and it's beneficial. It's doing what it's supposed to do. The example I use is, you know, you go into Walmart and you got to return, you know, something and you got that lovely little old person up at the front and they go, here, do you need to return that, honey? Let me put a little stamp on it. And they put a little tag on there and then you can walk around and then go up to the return counter whenever you want so they don't think you stole something. Okay, that's what immunoglobulins do. They're just tagging and bagging. The body's supposed to do that, okay? So the thing is, is the uh, the use of the term kind of started in the early 2000s. So it's actually been around for a while, but most of you guys never even heard of it until all the uh, the bloggers and the uh, ghost writers and copywriters started cranking out content for some of the pills, potion, and powder peddlers. Okay, um, it usually came out when, like when they started talking about cyclomegalovirus and Epstein Barr and some other viruses, um, influenza, and so forth and so on. Even uh, other acute respiratory uh, syndrome coronavirus. What? That was around in the 2000s? Yep. Did you know that? Have you ever heard of it up until now? Probably not. Okay. So it ain't nothing new. So basically what you have is, is just think of cytokines as this group of other small proteins that are secreted by cells. And the purpose for them is to tag and bag. It's intercellular signaling and communication. Okay. So when you think of a storm and it's all reckless and chaotic and out of control, that's false. That's a misrepresentation. Okay. So different cytokines have different uh, paracrine, um, autocrine, and endocrine activity. Uh, they do things through their, their action is through receptor binding and they, they, they elicit all kinds of different responses in the body. So they control cell proliferation and differentiation and they regulate um, uh, angiogenesis and immune stuff and inflammatory responses. So they're a good thing. Okay. So don't think that if you have an immunological response vis-a-vis cytokines, that it equals bad. It doesn't mean you should by default go and seek to suppress it. Does that make sense? It's just like when you have cytokines go up and it raises your body temperature, you're supposed to, because guess what happens when your body starts to generate heat, right? Well, number one, it, it that heat is infrared light. What does infrared light do? It increases exclusion zone. What's exclusion zone that you would have? Well, easy water. So in other words, it is the body's own natural innate ability to raise heat, to increase body light that actually has an effect on the water metabolism in your body, which actually produces a secondary energy source. If you want to learn more about that, you can go ahead and check out the work of Gilbert Ling and Dr. Gerald Pollack, my buddy, Jerry. Okay. Great book fourth phase of water, it'll break that down for you. But now you just learn a method, a mechanism of action as to why we want to increase body heat and not suppress fever. It's also another mechanism why we should keep putting back in positive, healthy sources of water. Okay. Simple. It's the mechanism of action. You just learned it right there. If you want to learn more about that, you want to invest a little bit in some training because you know, I am here to self promote, right? Cause I am a capitalist. Okay. Is you can go over to programs.balanceprotocol.com and you can enroll in the BP Enviro course, the BP Enviro course. And in, um, uh, the water module, I break all that down for you. Okay. So those of you who've gone for the course and you're watching this and you're seeing this in balance nation, give everybody, give me a shout out. Um, if you like the course and if it was worth it, did it change your life and did you, did you uh, to learn some things? Okay, so back to cytokines and storms. Told you there was a lot to cover today, all right? So remember, there's inflammatory responses, okay? And anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory, okay? So just because it's inflammation doesn't differentiate if it's anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory, it's inflammatory. So another hallmark of an uneducated, unskilled practitioner, blogger, influencer, biohacker, whatever, is if you ever see them talk about and use the term inflammation, because they'll always be talking about squelching the fire. 
squelching inflammation. They'll be talking about um, suppressing the inflammation and the cause of all diseases, inflammation. It's not true. But then now they'll talk out of their own side of the mouth, not knowing, and they'll go, well, they'll start saying autophagy. Well, we need to do this to increase autophagy. A new, a, another term that they, somebody just pulled out because it's a great marketing thing because nobody heard of it, though it's been around for decades and decades. I mean, the principle, of, anyways. Well, guess what autophagy is? Inflammation. Okay, it's your body breaking down cells. You think it just does that all like non-inflammatory wise? Okay, so autophagy is inflammation. Here you are telling people to do things that are anti-inflammatory or to squelch inflammation, but yet you're also trying to tell them to introduce inflammation. Context cubed. And that's the difference between people who are just parroting other people's content and everybody gets into that echo chamber. And if one person says autophagy, everybody else starts saying autophagy. But you can always tell the, the, the shenanigan, the charlatan, because they're using the word inflammation and they don't tell you specifically about that inflammation in the same content. Okay? So, that's, so I want to teach you what to look for. How to think, not what to think. So go look at that yourself. So basically the pathology of a cytokine storm will start somewhere local and then kind of go systemic. So there are times when it's get unchecked. I've been checking cytokines and stuff like that for a very long time, okay? I teach all my students in Balanced Protocol Institute preceptorship program once they get into phase two, how to actually do that, okay? So what I figured I would do is I would show you guys um, what that actually looks like. How about that, you know? To show you, I've got mad skin in the game, okay? All right, well, let's just take a peeky, 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 peeky. Nope, that's not the right one. I'm going to show you that shortly. Okay, so what we want to do is i got to come here. Sorry, guys. See, I'm my own producer. Clicking buttons, clicking and clicking and clicking. All right, so what we want to do is we want to come over here, and we want to get on some of that, and we actually want to show Adobe. Adobe. Okay, so here's what we've got. Now I've, I've uh, redacted the patient's name here, okay? But here's what's really cool. This is a typical panel that Dr. AGB will, will order uh, at a given time with, with the uh, patients that I work with, okay? So of course, we're gonna take a look at things like glucose and we're gonna do your Chem 14 and we're gonna take a look at your CBC and do all this other kind of fun stuff, right? We're gonna do your iron panel and so forth. And look at this patient here. Vitamin D, always have to check it, 25.9, right? So it's not quite in the sweet spot that I like it, but it's a little on the low side. I don't think 25 is really low. I think it's low normal. Their cutoff is 30. Um, but anyways, take a look at there. We take a look at immunoglobulin, G, A, M, and E. You got to take a look at the immunoglob uh, immunoglobulin game. That gives you a lot of insight. We take a look at you know a lot of these markers, but... There's a, there's a number, C-reactive protein, that's an inflammatory marker. So that's a marker of inflammation, okay? All right, pretty crazy, all right? So here's the thing, okay? Let me zoom back out of here. Okay, so we take a look at thyroid panels, insulin, micro, uh, beta-2 microglobulin for various reasons, ANA, Another inflammatory marker called fibrinogen activity. So there's another high marker for this patient. We take a look at that G6PD uh, deficiency because that, that either qualifies or disqualifies people for various um, uh, therapeutics. Okay, we take a look at CBC and differentials. This tells us a lot. Okay, so we know we've got a low mean corpuscle volume volume low mean corpuscle hemoglobin, and these kinds of things. So this is a type of an anemia. The question is, is why? It doesn't tell us why. We have to take a look at the functional markers of methylmalonic acid and fig glue and make that determination. Anyways, so we take a look at, at various hormones. There's all kinds of stuff. It's a big panel. This is what I call my super panel, okay? Look at that, elevated DHEA. That's another clue. Can't get into all of this today, but look at that. Looky there, okay? There's something called a TH1, TH2 panel. So this patient, you ready for it, is an example of a cytokine storm, okay? Look at that number. Whoa, bam, huge IL-4, okay? Huge number, okay? So then we keep going. We take a look at IL-2. Interleukins, by the way, are cytokines, okay? They're synonymous. So when you see the IL number, that's a cytokine, okay? IL-2, IL-4, we took it at IL-5, which is elevated to, IL-6, which is super elevated as well. IL-10, not so much. 12, high, 
INF gamma, normal, okay? Then TNF alpha, normal, okay? We also look at some other markers. Let's just kind of flick through here. I'm not gonna explain all these to you guys today. If ever you come and wanna be, be a practitioner and learn this stuff, that's great. Uh, glycomark, which is really what you should be doing to take a look at your diabetes patients and finding out what the hell is going on with blood sugar, not hemoglobin A1C, by the way. I always check vitamin A, which is completely normal in this patient. And look at the active form of vitamin D, 1,25 calcitriol. It's on the high end of normal. So look at there, ain't that something? And this is all gonna come around here in just a second in today's class. Vitamin D was only uh, on, in the, in the, uh, the mid to, to upper 20s, but yet over here on the active form, there's plenty. So that's why one doesn't tell you the other, okay? Now we can't go and get into the vitamin D debate. I covered extensively in the light module in Balance Protocol in Viro 2.0, which you can go over to programs.balanceprotocol.com and invest in that while you're sitting around for the next couple of weeks. It'll do your body good. Okay. We take it also to understand what vitamin A is doing. You need to look at retinol binding protein. You can't just look at the total amount of uh, a that's floating around in the blood and know how the body's using it. That'd be the same thing as looking in an automobile and take a look in the, in the gas tank and go, oh, there's plenty of gas. And that tells you, you know, uh, if the carburetor is, you know, the dwell is set right. That's what the us, us old school, you know, um, um, rich junkies. Okay. So there's more to it. There's more to the story. Okay. I take a look at plasma histamine because that tells me what's going on with all kinds of stuff, including um, uh, uh, methylation status. Okay. We take a look at ceruloplasmin, which tells me what your body's ability to do uh, with a variety of compounds is doing. We take a look at ionized calcium. Anyways, here's my point. <clears throat> you see how that patient was in a cytokine storm, but had relatively uh, low total 25 hydroxy vitamin D, but nice 1 comma 2 5. Well, let's do a compare and contrast. Let's go to the next patient. Okay. Here's a different one. You see this patient born in 1938. Okay. Just so happens to live out in Arizona. Okay. High hemoglobin A1C, but they're relatively thin. Why is that? Well, because he's 80 some daggum years old, you know, context. Anyways, all the other markers are looking good. Look at that vitamin D 38. Okay. So much higher. It's just in the sweet spot. Okay. As we go through these labs, look, you know, C-reactive protein is fine, but this homocysteine, a little more elevated than I like it to be. I usually like to see that less than eight. Um, uh, six is preferred. But anyways, I can go on forever on this. This is kind of fun stuff. Again, take a look at all these other different values you might have seen or remembered in the previous one. Okay. But let's get to it. Oh, look at there. Look at those high eosinophils. Okay. So if you don't know what eosinophils are, they're a type of white blood cell. Um, that goes after uh, various uh, microbes and parasites, okay? So you can actually uh, have a cytokine storm induced by uh, eosinophils fighting off something, but, but not always, okay? As you will see, okay? Poor guy had some low testosterone, but he had high sex hormone binding globulin. So we got to look at the reason why that is and form a, form a hypothesis. But here's that TH panel again. Well, lo and behold, IL-2, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12. Look, everybody's looking pretty daggum normal and fine. But hold on a second. I thought you just said that if you have a parasitic infection or something like that and your acenophils are elevated, you should be having a cytokine storm. No. What's the moral of the story? Don't treat the symptom support systems. In other words, you have to use and apply another concept tenant of balance protocol, which is Q square, M square, qualify, quantify, measure, and monitor. Know who you're working with. And I'm, as if I'm talking to other practitioners out there, but for those of you who work with other clinicians and my colleagues out there, and they're just telling you, you need to fix your gut because the gut is the source of all the evils and whatever you've got and leaky gut and get away from all the gluten because gluten makes you bad. Oh my gosh. You know what I tell people? I don't know. Tell me your story. Let's sit for an hour and a half and take a deep dive through an initial comprehensive case review. Then I'll get your story. And then I'll form a hypothesis in my mind and then talk to you about it, doing some thinking and linking and we'll figure it out. But then I'm always going to say, well, I've been doing this for 26 years, tens of thousands of patients later, but guess what? Let's still gather some data. You know, a little something called the scientific method.
And so we should do proper labs that fits the context of the case that you just made me your autobiography, you know, writer in. Okay. Because you got to differentiate. You just can't go, hey guys, are you scared of getting uh, COVID-19? Bloom! Take this holistic, whole list of medicine uh, approach. You see the danger in that? These two people would absolutely be wrecked if I gave them the exact same thing. Now, I can't give you the history of either one that gets in all that. But without proper context, and I'm not talking about some silly test, you know, like you'll get some, some charlatan like Evan Brand who, who just took a couple of thousand dollar courses online and now holds himself out as a functional medicine practitioner. And you go hear him, he's going to say everything is adrenal fatigue. Well, really, you, know, you see how your DHEA is this way? And uh, These people don't know what they're talking about because they don't do the proper labs. Why? Because they don't have the licensure, the scope, or the ability to actually do the right ones. Okay? Speaking of that, let's take a look at this. Okay? So here's another situation where... If this person, okay, was to actually take the recommendations of the powers that be out there, these influencers and other FM docs, right? So this is one that was just done this just uh, here recently in February, okay? Let me just kind of whip through this, this test here real quick. So this is one of the labs that I actually do for my patients. It's called a NutraVal Plasma, okay? This gives me insight in all kinds of things. What's going on in your... Um, your, your GI with malabsorption, dysbiosis markers, neurotransmitters, and what's going on on your brain, your carbohydrate metabolism, which tells me how to give you your division of macros, proteins, fats, and carbs. If you're in fast oxidation, slow oxidation, these are all your markers right here, energy metabolism, what your mitochondria are doing. So you got all these people who are mitochondriacs who don't even look at the molecules, the biomarkers that appertain to what the mitochondria is doing. What in the mitochondria are people doing? They're not looking at those, but they're selling you supplements, NAD and PQQ and all these other kind of stuff. And they don't even know what your, 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 your things are doing. Okay. That's what happens. They don't have any context to view. They're just talking to anybody like this is supposedly is beneficial for your mitochondria. Well, that's not true. See this person right here, this formin amino glutamic acid right over here, this value that's over in red on the right-hand side of 1.8, that's the functional marker for folate. So now what if this person right here did the following? Oh, they went and got tested because they were worried about the coronavirus and then they had their, their snot locker uh, swabbed and they go, oh, well now you gotta start taking this chloroquine drug, this anti-malarial which I've told you in other videos, is an antifolate drug. That's its mechanism of action. It stops the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dihydrofolate uh, folate, folate reductase. Anyways, the lysosomes. The bottom line is, is this. This person right here, who's already deficient and has a functionally broken folate, starts driving that medication into themselves in the absence of context, these are the ones that have the problems with that drug. Seizures, psychosis, all kinds of things, okay? It's crazy. You gotta treat the person, not the disease, okay? Support systems, not symptoms, all right? Very simple, okay? So that's what happens on this one, all right? So here's the deal. Let's just keep scrolling through here, right? This is what their amino acid status is actually doing. So they're a little, they're imbalanced. They have a little too much. This is what happens oftentimes when you try to go keto or carnivore and you drive up an imbalance in your amino acids, okay? So if somebody wants to just kindly let Dr. Sean Baker know that there's consequences of telling everybody without any context of you or knowing what your biological terrain is, your biochemical individuality, your genetic uniqueness, to just eat a whole bunch of, you know, back knee making meat. I love meat. I love plants. I eat it all. Now you know what the consequences can be. How you like them apples, okay? This is what happened. This is the kind of stuff that wrecks somebody when they are going and they're eating carnivore or keto, okay? It wrecks your amino acid profiles. It causes you to think that you just need a bunch of that and don't eat any plants. So then the folate goes down, but they'll say, but there's folate in meat and there's folate in liver. Okay, great. There's money in the bank. Doesn't tell you what the value of it is, the buying power, the context cubed. All right. So this is what happens when you go ahead and you wreck yourself with a dogmatic diet like that and you drive these kind of imbalances into the body. OK, but guess what? People don't look at it that way. And for the clinicians out there who do this NutraVal and you just go and whatever the supplements are at the beginning and whatever, 
you, you haven't been properly trained. Why is that? Because you went to Institute for Functional Medicine. You went to Kalish Method. And those guys don't know how to teach you how to read a NutraVal. All right? That's re See, I'm calling people by names. This is my opinion. If you don't like it, let me know. Okay? We'll keep going, shall we? All right. So then now here's another thing. Now we're going to get into the fatty acid markers. Okay? You should know what your fatty acid status is. Okay? This person right here, all right, is, you know, in a certain status. Okay? They have, a, they have a broken delta-6 desaturase activity, okay? That's the enzyme that governs what your fats do in your body and how they're manufactured is my point, okay? But this person here does have a little excess of omega-6s, right? Relative, okay? But actually, too much saturated fat. So here's my point. There's nutrients that govern the movement of omega uh, 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 fats. Three is on the left, six is on the right. This person's got a hot, whole bunch of di, uh, excuse me, uh, gamma linoleic acid, and but then they have low dihomo gamma linoleic acid. There's reasons for that. Maybe because they have a deficiency in the cofactors, B3, B6, B5, biotin, vitamin C. Where could that happen? How could that happen? Oh, by not actually eating plants and just driving in a carnivore diet because it sounded sexy and you're a dude who likes to burp and fart and that's really manly to just eat a bunch of flesh. Yeah, because screw the tests, right? Are we having fun with this, guys? I'm being very sarcastic today because I'm having fun. All right, so here's the deal. This is, the this is what happens. Now, take a look at this, though. Look at what happened there. The glutathione dropped out of the bottom of it. Yes, you should take a look at that. So... What you don't want to do is go, oh, you got coronavirus and glutathione does this. And when it comes to this, that, and the other, and viruses, so buy my liposomal glutathione. Okay? Well, guess what? It doesn't always work. Most of the time, it doesn't. All it does is work to put a whole bunch of money into Ben Lynch's pocket because he wants you to buy his liposomal and stuff like that to combat coronavirus. Okay? But here's the tail of the tape. This is what I want to scroll down to just to kind of show you. Look at there. Vitamin D at level 33. But look at this. Ain't this something? Okay, so here's what we got. These are the elemental markers of an individual. Okay, why is the zinc high at 132 micrograms per deciliter, also known as parts per million? Why is that? Because he ate a whole bunch of meat and flesh and seafood. But this one was from seafood because the omega 3s aren't very high. But you see my point? So, if you go and think that you're going to go and prevent coronavirus yielding to COVID-19 because you're going to, the, you, some of these bloggers, influence in functional medicine, holistic practitioners told you to take some zinc and didn't tell you the last name of the zinc, the dose of said zinc, how long to take it and when to stop it, which they all should do. They don't know. So that's why they just say, hey, take it. And most people just keep buying it. You know, ask yourself when you buy a supplement and you go, oh, it made me feel better. So I'm just going to keep taking it. They never give you an exit strategy, okay? Well, this person overshot zinc. Look at that. Too much zinc can create a problem. Thank goodness his copper's balanced out, you know, because we're looking for a 1.1 to 1.5 ratio zinc to copper. But I thought everybody was magnesium deficient. Well, not this guy. He has plenty, okay? So what's the moral of the story, Balance Nation? Threw a lot at you. I want to just give you, and this is why these videos are long for me, because context matters and it takes a while to give it to you, okay? I know there's a lot of people who come on here and they've dropped off, okay? We had a really nice number of around 50 or 60 and now we're half of that because people are like, oh, Beck, okay? And that's fine. But here's my point. Maybe they're going to come back and listen to me later. The litmus test I'm teaching you and encouraging you to raise your standard to is the people that you get your information from need to have the context of you not some mother stinking disease, especially the hoax of one that we see that the world has never seen before called coronavirus. It's been around for decades, okay? A long time, okay? So they're making recommendations that people are sitting at home with nothing else to do but tap on here and have orders of supplements under the auspices of immune support to come at them, okay? That's what happens. And th that's, that's the trouble that I actually have, okay, is they're not giving you the context of things, all right? You know, and, and the thing for me is, is why is that important? Well, because it can create problems. Let me give you an example of one of them, okay? So let me show you this, okay? Let's go back to here, okay? This is one. 
my colleague, um, Tom O'Brien. Okay, so let's listen to what his recommendation of what he would do. If I get sick, what am I going to do? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take vitamin D 50,000 units at a time, 50,000 units once a day for a week, every single day. I'm going to blast, and let me explain why vitamin D. And this is why it's part of the bundle to help protect you. But if you get sick, you, you want to bring in the big guns. They found four people who had died in the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic and were buried in the Arctic tundra of an army base. They found them in the tundra and they dug them up and they did autopsies to find out how did they die. And that's when scientists really learned about what's called a cytokine storm, meaning your immune system in the lungs over responds to the perceived threat. What does that mean? If you think of the uh, part. All right, that's enough of that nonsense. Okay, listen, here's the deal. Not an ad hominem attack. I'm not talking about Tom and the fact that I you know, don't think he looks very healthy. He never has. But let's talk about what he said. 50,000 IU of vitamin D. Now, that seems like a bigger number because it's international units. If you want to convert that over to micrograms, you just uh, multiply or divide it by 0 0.025, okay? So one IU is equal to 0 0.025 micrograms, okay? Which is one thousandth of a one thousandth, so a ten thousandth of a gram. So it's it's a big number, all things considered. Because remember, in those labs that we do, 25 hydroxy vitamin D is measured in uh, nanograms. Um, one comma two five is measured in picograms. But here's my point: fifty thousand. We're gonna hit it hard every day if you get sick when you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know what's going on. Okay. And basing his opinion upon dudes' bodies dead in the tundra. And the cytokine storm, you don't you have no context of why these guys were dead in the tundra. And you want to go and blame it blows and boggles my mind. But what was the answer? Well, the answer was is to go and get the um the bundle. The bundle. What is the bundle? Okay. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, well, look at here, okay? Boost your immune system, okay? By buying this bundle, and it just so happens to be 15% off. So if you guys want to fall for that, feel free to go over to thedoctor.com forward slash rapid dash response, okay? And look at all this, okay? Some zinc, some D3, some other crap, okay? Again, not an ad hominem of him. I'm just talking about the thing in here. This is all facts. I just showed it to you. It's my personal opinion. If you guys disagree, it's fine. If he's, he's, I know there's a lot of people he's helped out. Okay, I think some people say he's a great doctor. Okay, but in this case, it's reckless, totally reckless. Okay, you, you were, we're talking about go and get tested for COVID. How come you're not getting tested for, for, for vitamin D status before you go driving in 50,000 mother stinking IU into somebody? How come you're not getting uh, blood vitamin C or ascorbate levels before you're driving that in? How come you're not getting blood glutathione levels before you're selling everybody a bunch of liposomal glutathione? But yet you're telling them to go get that test, but not these tests. Ask that question. I'd, I'd like to know that. Okay. So here's the deal. So aside from that, okay, then you got another absurdity, okay, that's going on out there, right? Which is, you know, this guy, Jack Cruz. Telling everybody, you know, listen, how much do you know about the coronavirus receptor proteins that allow it to, you know, it to gain access? Not much. Okay, come be a member. You guys can do that. Go to jackcruz.com forward slash become a member and uh, go take a look out, right? So if you want to, you know, just go ahead and, you know, get your, uh, you know, advice, you know, from, you know, that. Okay, knock yourself out. Okay, you're, you're more than welcome to. But guess what? I'm going to give you some information on that receptor. Okay, because... Context is, yeah, nicotine can affect that receptor, but does it necessarily mean it's a beneficial thing for you to drive up, you know, various you know, contexts of that? Absolutely not. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's take a peek. Okay. Let's go to the tail of the tape. There just so happens to be um, some literature out there. It's called the scientific literature. Okay. We've taken a look at it, things like the influenza vaccination and respiratory virus interference. And we took a look at these kind of things. And guess what? 
One of the things I want to show you this real quick is the recommendation out there from the medical community and Fauci, the other little guy that I don't like that's on TV who none of us have ever heard of, but then all of a sudden he doesn't ever go away. You know what I mean? I would, you know, so, well, the lollipop guild had to come out and needed a little, <laughs> that was a cheap shot. I don't apologize. So anyways, if you go and get the flu shot, it actually makes you um, uh, increase risk. Okay. So look at that bottom down there. Okay. Examining virus interference by specific respiratory virus showed mixed results. Vaccine-derived virus interference was significantly associated with coronavirus and human um, metapneumonia virus. However, significant protection with vaccination was associated not only with most influenza viruses, but also these, okay? So here's my point. You can go and do these different things, okay? And if you guys want this one, just, just look at the name of this report right here, and you can go and you can find it. You can download it yourself. It's really easy. Okay. The bottom line is, is this, okay. There's things that are out there that let's use air quotes work or have an effect. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is there's context to be had. If you don't have context of you, you got to be careful and your doctor clinician or health coach should be able to provide you access of how to obtain that context. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. All right. So that's the bub kiss. Okay. So then go, let's, let's go ahead here. And let's, one of the things that, uh, like, uh, Chris Cresser was telling everybody was to take a whole bunch of vitamin D and a vitamin A and propolis. Okay. Well, guess what? Yes. Vitamin D in this particular study. Okay. Can alleviate the LPS induced acute lung injury via the renin angiotensin system. Okay. RAS. This is the suspected thing of what's going on when it comes to coronavirus, okay? These lipopolysaccharides, they trigger these illnesses in the lungs, okay? By directly or indirectly damaging the, the what's called the PMVECS or the uh, pulmonary microvascular endothelial cells. So the thing about it is, is yes, vitamin D levels can attenuate that. But here's another principle of balance protocol. I always say, don't swing the pendulum. There's a curve. You know how everybody's saying, flatten the curve, flatten the curve, social distancing, flatten the curve. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. That's true. But what have I been telling? What does Dr. Beck say? Go outside and get some sunshine. It's free. Okay. I'm not selling you vitamin D pills. I don't. Not at all. Okay. So the bottom line is, is there is an effect Okay, but little is not going to work. Too much is going to be harmful also. You guys, listen, I'm telling you, you can be wrecked by taking high dose vitamin D. If you're in that 2,000 to 5,000 IU range, it's relatively safe. Okay, have I seen some people do it too long and create a problem? Yes. Do I recommend oral supplement, uh, supplementation of vitamin D in the context of certain individuals? Absolutely. I talk about it uh, in the light module of Balanced Protocol Enviro 2.0. But that's if, if, I'm going to say it, can I get a third time? If you're unable to get sunshine or build the UV lamp, which I teach you how to make. Okay. So the bottom line, it's context. So together with that 1,25 OH and that interleukin-2, it inhibits the production of inflammatory cytokines by T cells. Okay. But I thought cytokines were bad. No, they're part of the body's innate intelligence. Okay. Then comes in your genetics, right? Supposedly the SNPs. But what if I have a VDR receptor thing because I read dirty genes and I told I was supposed to take this. And if my VDR receptor is, is a certain single nucleotide polymorphism, I have to dose on vitamin D. That's not true. It's a lie. Okay. It's a damn lie. All right. So vitamin D does have a function in there. Okay. So what else we got? Guess what it also is. It's also a negative endocrine regulator of renin angiotensin system and blood pressure. Okay. And I'm not, well, I guess technically I could be, I, I, I may be guilty right now of a little bit of cherry picking. Okay. Touche. But what I do is I teach the controversy. I want you to know that there's different points of view. Don't believe me get to either one of those and ask yourself, where do I apply in this study? Where was I in that sample population in that N equals something? Okay. So here's the deal. What if the person who told people to take vitamin D like reckless, you know, in this particular case, Dr. Tom O'Brien to take 50,000 IU, but didn't, but what about the little old person here 
you know, in Florida who might already ha have high D, who starts banging that, who also just so happens to have uh, hypertension. You see what I'm saying? Now, so take recommendations only as a call to investigate. That's what I'm encouraging you to do, okay? Because you could have to understand there are effects. If a molecule has a benefit, it by default can have a detriment, okay? Guess what? Water is a very effective, you know, hydration strategy. But if I slug down two gallons of water right now, what do you think that would do to my body electric? That's right, hyponatremia. And guess what can happen? Death. Okay, so yes, people have died from excessive vitamin D uh, consumption. Not necessarily directly or vitamin D toxicity, but because of other systems being damaged. Okay, so that can't really just be the litmus. Okay, so then the other thing is, is then you can also go and take a look at the uh, molecular mechanisms of vitamin D in the cardiovascular system. Remember, heart disease is the number one killer. Okay, people have some cardiovascular system abnormalities and aberrations. And if you don't know where yours are or your loved ones who are buying these ready go packs, you know, from these pill, pill, uh, pill pushers, they're in trouble potentially. Okay, but then of course comes in the question of things like, okay, well, what about uh, uh, chloroquine? Well, guess what? People are like, well, I'm just drinking my gin and tonic. Okay, well, guess what? Sorry, guys, I'm here to tell you. This is a brother who makes his own uh, tonic water, okay? With my own chinchona bark. Literally, it's in that cabinet right over there, okay? It's delicious. It's not as clear as the stuff in the bottles, but that bottle stuff from Schweppes or Canada Dry or whatever, there's not enough in there, okay? There's just not enough. So there is some effectiveness of quinine when it comes to malaria parasites and things through this mechanism of action that they're proposing. But what I want you to understand is, is it's not uh, linear like that, okay? Um, you know what else actually has some benefits along that um, inflammation pathway? Well, look at this, okay? So you can tell those, you know, charlatans like Matt Blackburn who tells everybody that PUFAs are bad. Okay, well, go and take a look at the roles of dihomo gamma linolenic acid, which is an omega-6, against the proliferation of diseases. Okay, but did but whoever whoever tests that on anybody, right? I mean, why would anybody or how would anybody ever know what their gamma linolytic acid levels are? Oh well, guess what? Dr. AGB does on every single patient I see. So you see down here this DGLA over here on the right under these omega sixes. Okay, he this person is actually deficient in DGLA. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that he's missing out on a protective effect on the proliferation of disease protection that it can have along the lines of prostaglandin E1, which is another type of inflammation. So when everybody talks about inflammation, are they talking about cytokines? Are they talking about prostaglandins? Are they talking about uh, LPS? So again, I'm just in this one video, I'm showing you that anybody who says inflammation and doesn't differentiate it, doesn't know what they're talking about, and they don't have the ability to tell you, or they would differentiate because the actions of, of those are, are entirely different, right? Pretty cool, right? So, oh my goodness, let's go, let's look at some more cherry picking literature, right? So essential fatty acids and their metabolites could function as endogenous HMG-CoA reductase. Hey, you know what that is? That's what statin drugs are, okay? HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, okay? And ACE enzyme inhibitors, antiarrhythmic, hypertensive, and what anti-inflammatory, cytoprotective, and cardioprotective, right? So guess what? Fatty acids can do that. Well, guess which ones, right? Oh, look at there, DGLA and GLA, but I thought that Matt Blackburn, who tells everybody, that, just like Ray Pete does, that PUFAs are bad. No, not in the context of you. You see what I'm saying? If you don't know, you don't know. Remember, they're talking with no data of you. I'm talking in generalities. Sometimes they can be inflammatory, sometimes not. But guess what? Here's what I do, and every, every doctor that I ever train and clinician that I produce, okay? 
is we get profiles just as a standard workup of where you're at to make determinations in diet, to make determinations in lifestyle change, to make determinations uh, in, in, in your environment and mindset that you have to get on board with in order to correct physiology. Isn't that amazing? Yep. So it is to me anyways. Okay. So guess what? There's all kinds of stuff like that. You can act. So while everyone's turning to drugs for this, uh, the effects of working on that ACE enzyme, but it couldn't be that it's just, you know, that, okay, that's it. It's fatty acids. I'm just going to get me a bunch of GLA. I'm going to get me some black currant seed, some, M some borage and some evening primrose. Beck, are you selling those? I'm like, nope. You know what you need to eat? Beans, lentils, legumes, nuts, seeds, and wait for it, whole grains. Imagine that. What? That's right. Yeah, all that stuff. Don't get me started. Now, guess what else you got? Oh, well, looky here. Amino acids have an effect. Taurine affects ACE, ACE2, okay? And the HPA axis induced stuff. Now, of course, this was in rats. So we can argue that all day long, okay? But here's the thing, that's what we do. I love me some taurine, but don't mean you just go out there and buy some taurine. We don't know the context of you. You might have plenty in your serum. You wouldn't know that unless you did a NutriVal plasma with a trained individual like me. Was that a solicitation? It might have been. I think that was, I'm nilping you. I'm NLPing you guys right now. You're under my spell. This is where I'm trying to make money off of you. That's right. If you want the best, you're going to have to pony up for the best. And I, I just so happen to think, be of the opinion that I am the best. Does that sound arrogant? Well, some people who don't know me. But guess what? I do a lot of that free pro bono for the military special forces out there. But you guys, if you want it, you got you to gotta, you gotta find out. Okay, here's my deal. We have another effective nutrient called taurine. So why does the drug company not go to fatty acids, amino acids, and minerals? Well, because there's no money in it. That's why. That's kind of interesting. Okay. But that was just an anomaly back. There's just one. St oh, hold on a second. There's interactions between taurine and angiotensin too. also. Ah, man. But, you, but who reads the amino acids journal? But this guy. Okay. Pretty awesome. Okay. So here's the thing. One last cherry pick and not being duplicitous. Okay, but nutraceuticals have potential for boosting type 1 interferon response to RNA viruses, including, wait for it, shut up, you want me to zoom in real good on that one, guy? Influenza and coronavirus. Ain't that something? Okay, so what does that tell us? Okay, well, it tells us that you don't have to have pharmaceuticals. You have to have, you can use nutraceuticals. But doc, isn't that all the stuff that you got all these, that you're putting down people for selling? Yes, because they don't have your context. That's it. If you work with me, am I going to recommend some supplements to you? Well, of course. I keep the pill count very low, but I substantiate it with labs. That's the big difference. That's the litmus test. Okay. All right, man, covered a lot of stuff today. Covered a lot of stuff. Okay. And you want to know reason why um, all those people that were, that you see the stuff happening in, in, in Italy was an issue. Okay. Why is that? Well, it's because 99% of them who died from virus had other illnesses. Context. Isn't that amazing? Take a look at the map and look at the time of the year. What just so happens to be different in that time of the year? Oh, maybe it's vitamin D levels. No, I don't think it's that simple because then everybody's going, well, maybe it's the 5G rollout in there. Well, maybe it's the 5G plus the low vitamin D plus being stuck, plus being cold, plus being dried. You see where I'm going with all that? All right. So that's my summary today. We're already an hour into this call. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you have too. Uh, let me go back to my notes here and make sure I didn't miss something. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's enough for today. So I just wake up in the morning, I start scribbling on a piece of paper. This is what I do. So these are my show notes. <laughs> I write down everything, by the way. That's kind of how that works. All right. So what I'm going to do before I get off here is I'm going to go to the tail of the tape because I asked you guys to do some uh, comments and concerns. And let's see what people say. All right, let's go to it. Kate Garden says, hi. Let's see here. You guys want to be on camera? Okay. So Kate says, hi. Somebody gave me the shaka bra. That's cool. Carlos, who always listens to my stuff. Keep it thug, Doc. I try. I have some fun. 
again, guys, just understand when, when, when I feature somebody or say them by name, it's my opinion. Okay. The thing is, it's from my experience. Don't believe me. Go research it. Look into it for yourself. Okay. There's no scandal there. I'm, I'm showing you where I get my information from. So you can look at that stuff. Um, Scott Hines says, keep it honest. Yes. I'll look at that poochie. Okay. One of my other, um, I'm just going to post this. The amount of people recommending blanket supplementation without context is ridiculous. Well, you know what? I love John Mitchell. He's a wonderful PA in PA, right? Trained by yours truly. Okay. So way to go, John. Thank you for the, for the, the vote of uh, confidence and support. Uh, Angela Carver says, we'll trade you rain for some sun. Oh, I would love to trade that. That'd be great. Um, Kate says, conspiracy, conspiracist. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oliver laughs at me. That's good. And let's see here. 19 days, leave the house, except for walking on. That's great. Okay. Mark is down in Columbia for 19 days. We can't leave our houses except for to walk the dog. Yeah. Sorry about that, Mark. That's why I love the Constitution, man. It's amazing, right? So it's kind of, kind of nuts. Um, another one of my protégés. Doctor of Pharmacy, Robert Seek. What's up, Rob? Thanks for the shout. You know, you're awesome. Um, okay, let's see here. Mark says, I agree with you. UPS fear breeds irrationality and, and things like that. Breeds fear and spirals out. It does. It messes with the morphic resonance going on um, on the planet, too. It's pretty nuts. Hey, did you guys ever go and get those books that I recommended to you in the other videos? Morphic resonance. Uh, someone's saying don't take elderberry syrup because it will trigger a storm. It can. It absolutely can. So they talk about the benefit of elderberry, but in the context of a person who already is in a TH1 dominant state and you go and throw on elderberry extract because some blogger, influencer, FM, you know, health coach told you to with no context of you, you absolutely can because autoimmune people tend to have an imbalance in TH1, 2, or 17. So yes, they're talking out of their butt. It can. Don't just go take things for things. Especially if you're, you're asymptomatic and you're just trying to be preventative. It's absolutely ridiculous. Erica, your hair is my own point. No, it's not, Dawn. I'm dying over here. Why did you go to do that ultimate sin of going to Puerto Rico and freaking go down there and come back and have to be sequestered? You're keeping me, you know, in my bad hair. Anyway, that's my hairdresser. She's amazing. Veronica Scott says, Balance Protocol changed my family's life. I recommend to everyone. Yes. Amen to that. Okay. Dewey, mid-oxidizer represent. That's exactly right. Dewey knows what's up. We did his labs, and he knows exactly how to be dialing it in now. Mark says that Dewey is a show-off. He's a little bit. I'm a little bit of a show-off too, right? So truth be told. Let's see here. Uh, tone flow real. One of the sweetest spirits on the planet right there. Um, what's up, man? Dustin, love it. Love you too, man. Let's see here. Terry Wise says, great info. Carry on. I shall. I shall. As long as you keep doing that. Dustin's like, Q square, M square. That's exactly right. If you guys ever want to know how to be right 98% of the time, just test it. Okay? If it's going to steer and differentiate the case, not just going to freak you out by swabbing your nose. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Dewey says that's such bad thinking. Yeah. Mark, yeah. 50,000 every day. Well, just for context, Mark, he did say 50,000 IU every day for a week. Okay. Um, I think some people may be able to get away with that depending, but wow. Um, yep. He was explaining why he would take vitamin D like that would make no sense. I agree with you, Dewey, you know, based upon, you know, bodies that were buried in the tundra. Yikes. That's the power of the story, stuff like that, okay? Elijah laughs at my lollipop guild <laughs> thing. Okay. Um, uh, Dewey's got a good question there. Have any of you heard of, of the Jack Cruz BS receptor protein located in the take no blank center of the brain? <laughs> Come sign up with the site. Well, listen, I want people to go to my site and sign up too, so I can't play or hate on that. You know what I mean? Uh, thoughts on royal jelly, Shane says, benign if used modestly. I would say so. I, I think that that's one of the ones that doesn't have a whole lot of, lot of trouble there, to be honest with you, Shane. Um, it tastes real good, too. So royal jelly, propolis, those are relatively benign. They can. However, some people can have uh, uh, immunological uh, reactions to them. 
Um, but yeah, relatively benign. That would be one. Uh, I would go to those over zinc, anything like that. Um, Dr. Clark says, that's right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Come on, somebody disagree with me. Put me down or challenge me or something. Another good doc in the house. Linda Hansen says, thanks, doc. Well, thank you, doc. Velda, she's always coming around. Love her to death. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Sean says, just saw you on live. Sorry I missed. Your info has helped me keep a hand keep a handful of clients. Thank you, Sean. Good. Keep on trucking. Darcy says, taking the girlfriend and dogs and kids to the park to play, laugh, and get some vitamin nature. Keep doing what you're doing, Doc. Darcy, that's exactly right. That's what we're going to be doing today. Well, actually, my, my wife and the princess, they all just went and did that, went to the grocery store, so I'm going to have to go get some of that today. I was outside in the sun already today. Let's see here. Dr. Slobum, little love for Dr. Beck. I knew the guy, knew his stuff, but after spending three days with the man, I can tell you what he shares on here is barely a piece of the brilliance in the mind. I've, I've taken about every FM, that's functional medicine, training out there, and he surpasses stuff that isn't even in their radio, radar. Bounce protocol on Viro is worth $3,000 per module easy, my honest opinion. If anyone ever has questions, feel free to message me. Much love. Well, that's great, man. See, I pay them to say that because they're my students. You see what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. Uh, Linda says, by the way, I've always been doing elderberry. It can be part of a Danish dessert we always had after dinner. Um, ooh, that does sound good. Yeah, as a food, knock yourself out. But remember, there's a difference between the food and the extract. When you start concentrating it down into stuff, it's a little bit different, okay? Kelly Young says, love this color. Okay, well, cool, man. Hey, listen, you guys, um, that wraps this up. I'm getting ready to go get my sunshine on today. This uh, COVID thing is not um, uh, doing as bad as the common uh, flu virus, okay? Uh, I'm going to keep referring back to that because it's a great litmus test, okay? It's just like saying, hey, this hurricane that came through as a Category 1 and the eye of the storm hit us, it ain't the same as an F5 tornado, okay? So um, take a look at that. Every, you know, I, I will tell you though, I'm going to, you know, the hell might be able to be freezing over because I heard um, the mayor of, uh, uh, the governor of New York Cuomo um, actually was saying a lot of cool stuff today because things are still open. No one's going to be shut in their house, but just social distance, you know, I get it. So, you know, guys, listen, I said it at the very beginning, at the onset, before many of you guys even knew about anything, I said, it'll be gone by May. End of May is the end of this nonsense. Now we got to just get the, the keep the you know, keep America great. All right, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Eric says he did pay me in the most amazing prime rib dinner. Yeah, I always roll out the grub when all the preceptees come here to do their life training. All right, Balance Nation, that's it. Remember, what's the call to action? Okay, couple of things. If you want this video, go and to share it with your people out there. Okay. YouTube.com forward slash balance protocol. Okay. If you want to get into balance nation, you got to go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash balance nation. Okay. Follow me over there on Instagram at balance protocol. Okay. If you want more information on my uh, prattlings and philosophy and that kind of fun stuff, I've got a free course and a paid course. Just the primers, okay? Programs.balanceprotocol.com, okay? You can follow me at Twitter at, at Balance Protocol, but it usually uh, extrapolates over and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm Dr. Anthony G. Beck. I love you guys, and I want you to learn to live life in balance. And how am I going to be able to help you do that? Go take the free course, and you'll get an understanding, okay? I've given the recommendations. Get outside. Get that sunshine. Make it D for free. Get connected to the earth. Hydrate. Pray play, meditate, hang out with your family, practice gratitude. Don't be afraid to go out social. Um, distancing does not mean sequestration or isolation. Okay. Be active, get the body movement, get that body temperature up, get your nasal passages up, clean them out, nasal irrigate, gargle, good hygiene. It's amazing. Universal things that you should be doing all the time. That's called living life in balance. Okay. Pills, potions, and powders should only come as a result of Q square M square. Okay. If you guys, if there's anybody at the reach of my voice who wants to uh, consider working with me or one of my clinicians that I've trained, cause I'm selective on who I work with and I'm, I'm a, um, 
a tough person to work with because I'm very demanding, but I can match you with another person who might be just a little bit more gentle. So don't be scared. Okay. If you're interested in getting proper tests of your uh, uh, biochemical individuality, understanding what's truly at hand, uh, then you can reach out to me at dranthonygbeck.com. And you just click that apply for consultation button and fill out that brief little questionnaire and I will circle back to you and present you with an opportunity for a no cost or obligation call with me. But I only want to do that call with people who are interested in working with me and or a member of my team. If you just want to ask questions, do that in Balance Nation. But if you're like, you know what, Beck, that made sense. I want to quantify myself, get past all these other bloggers who don't know anything about me and I've been following uh, them and wasting a bunch of money on uh, medicine cabinets and the spice cabinets and that kind of stuff, reach out to me at dranthonygbeck.com and we'll go from there, right? That is how you learn to live life in balance. Love you guys and I'll see you later.